It's day eight of President Bola Tinubu presidency, and we're monitoring closely developments in his first 100 days in office. I am Nifemi Ogunto. You remember, you can join the conversation now on Twitter if you use the hashtag first 100 days, tag Ativisi News NG, and at Nifemi Ogunto. President Tinubu has now asked the Senate to grant his request to appoint 20 special advisors. The letter of request was read and approved at plenary by the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan. In accordance with the provision of Section 151 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, as amended, which confers on the President the power to appoint special advisors to assist him in the performance of his functions, I write to request the kind of consideration of the Senate to appoint 20 special advisors. While hoping that the request will receive the expedition's consideration, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. On his request for the approval of the Senate to appoint 20 special advisors, we, we feel that this is something that is uh, of utmost uh, agency. He wants to uh, appoint his advisors, but he needs our approval here. And therefore, we should do that uh, for him to be able to probably today or tomorrow announce uh, his appointees. And after all the back and forth meeting with the federal government, the Nigeria Liberal Congress as well as the Trade Union Congress have suspended the planned nationwide strike over a full subsidy removal. This was part of the resolution reached at a meeting between organized labor and the federal government at the presidential villa on Monday night. Come with a more concrete reality and framework and alternative. The CNG alternative is better than the price even before the increment. Yeah, but uh, if, you check, if you check countries of the world like uh, uh, Kuwait, like Qatar and others, which large gas deposits, you will agree with me that it's a very viable alternative because the deposit here can uh, sustain the country for the next 500 years. Mm -hmm. It's a clean energy, eco-friendly, and cheaper. And I think the whole battle we are having now is the issue of the cost being at 500. And by our last meeting, you know, during Silver's time, it was we were talking about 90, you know, 90 naira. Mm -hmm. So, if this government achieves an option or alternative that is even under 90 or 120 or whatever. I think every one of you will be clapping for them. So it's the way power, mm. you know, to achieve this. It's a very viable alternative is done all over. So what we need is the way power. And, and uh, said by the Honorable Speaker, Federal House of Representatives, and my, my colleague, uh, the President of NLC, uh, that uh, we've been able to put some agreement together and um, the document is what was just read to you a few, few minutes ago. And uh, we from, from Labour, all we want to encourage government is to take this seriously because this government is just coming. Uh, this may be the first agreement that is being signed by, by this government that, that was inaugurated on May 29th by the Tinubu, uh, President Tinubu's administration. So I, I want us to, to commit uh, to get these issues resolved as soon as possible. So for us, uh, from Labour, we are, we, are, we are totally committed uh, to get these issues resolved for the benefit of uh, the entire Nigeria. So negotiation is on between the federal government and organized labor. Good thing is the economy will not be shut down as earlier scheduled for tomorrow. Let's talk to Femi Akonde, State House correspondent. He joins me live from Aso Villa. Femi, the Tinubu presidency seems to have crossed the first hurdle in its negotiations with organized labor. NLC and 2UC have now suspended their planned nationwide strike. What happens from here? 
Well, if I may, indeed, this is the first victory for the Bola Tinubu administration. The decision of the NUC, I mean LLC and the TUC to shelve the planned industrial strike will give the government a breather. Well, what, what happens from here is that the negotiations will continue. What the government and organized labor will do is now to set up and establish a framework and a timeline for the implementation of these demands tabled in uh, the meeting between organized labor and the federal government. And we already know what these demands are, topmost of which is the increment in the national minimum wage. The federal government and organized labor both agree on this and they have also agreed to set up a tripartite committee that will fine-tune the modalities uh, for the implementation of this. Uh, this committee will include uh, organized labor, the private sector, organized private sector, and indeed uh, the federal government and sub-national government. The federal government and sub-national government will be on the same page, organized uh, labor and the private sector. So we expect that in the coming days, this tripartite committee will begin to meet and when uh, they finally reconvene on the 19th of June, what Nigerians will be hearing will be the timeline for the implementation when this whole uh, implementation of the national minimum wage will start. They are also talking about um, the uh, cash transfer, the World Bank financed uh, cash transfer. You recall that the previous administration approached um, the World Bank for a loan of $800 million. What the Bolatinibu administration is doing right now is to review this and to ensure that it captures uh, the low income earners. You know, there's already a social register uh, set up by the uh, Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management that captures about 5 million household poor households we believe that that register will be expanded to capture more nigerians and ensure that this uh, cash world bank financed uh, cash transfer cash transfer loan is uh, indeed uh, the impact is felt by uh, more nigerians and you know they are also talking about the education sector to uh, look at why um, this sector has not really been vibrant look at issues hindering the development of uh, the education sector labor is concerned about that and this is one of the demands they tabled in their meeting with uh, the federal government they are also talking about making the refineries work in the country and they say well subsidy can be removed they would agree to the removal of a petrol subsidy if Nigeria's um, refineries, the four refineries uh, we have in Nigeria are up and running. They also want an expansion of Nigeria's um, rail network, rehabilitation of roads and construction of um, more roads to ease movement of um, goods and services from one place to the other. They believe that if all of these are uh, put in place that indeed uh, the removal of fuel subsidy, the impact will not be felt by Nigerians. So we wait for um, the 19th of June to see where uh, negotiations will go from there, Nifemi. Absolutely. We understand that that's when um, the implementation modalities will be discussed and um, it's President Tinubu's first deal with the organized labor. They seem to have a track record of failed promises from previous administrations and um, we're hoping to see uh, a remarkable difference this time. But let's turn our attention to the Senate, Femi, where um, lawmakers have now approved the appointment of tw some 20 um, uh, special advisors uh, to the president. Have you seen this list and how soon do you think it will be made public? Well, I believe it's only the president that has that list. Even the Senate did not get to see the list. All they got was a letter requesting for approval to appoint 20 special advisors. But you know, the Senate president understands the importance of this and he says that uh, he, uh, he asked his colleagues to please um, approve this urgently because the Bola Tinubu administration will need to start on a good footing. The major appointments we've had so far are that of the Chief of Staff, Femi Bajabia Miller, and the Secretary to the government of the federation well they would need more uh, people to come on board before the ministers are, are screened by the senate and then sworn in before the cabinet the federal cabinet is formed the administration will still need to be on course and these special advisors that uh, will be appointed by president bola Tinubu are those that will run the affairs of the country that will steer the ship help him to steer uh, the ship of the country uh, before the federal cabinet is formed well, we expect those announcements to uh, be made 
today or tomorrow or in the coming days we expect to hear all of these announcements but we don't expect that it will take too long before uh, they are announced we believe president bola Tinubu already has the list of these um 20 people he wants to appoint as special advisors we expect to hear uh, the appointment of the special advisor on media and communication we also expect to hear uh, other special advisors who will run other critical uh, sectors of the country maybe the national security advisor and some other critical um, sectors of the country that would help us steady the ship of the nation as we await the formation of the federal cabinet Nifemi. absolutely all like turkey uh, where the government doesn't need the endorsement of the parliament uh, you recall that the the Turkey president actually uh, named it um, the full list of his cabinet after he was sworn in. Perhaps we'll have to wait to see um, the ministerial nomination at the uh, advent of the 10th National Assembly. State House correspondent Femi Akonde live for us in Asso Villa. After the break, I'll be joined by CEO Economic Association.